the hearty this morning. And the cold. Yeah, but it's going to get worse, right? So the first announcement I have is that there's none of, there is not going to be a live nativity <laughs> on uh, Chris, on Christmas Eve. Yeah, it's too cold, too cold. So no live nativity on, on Christmas Eve, but of course we'll have our, our worship will begin uh, at, at seven at seven o'clock on Saturday evening. And then um, for those of you who may be not, not able to make it uh, Christmas Eve because of family obligations, you, you're welcome to come. Uh, we'll, we'll worship at 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock Christmas, Christmas morning, and you're invited to, to come in your pajamas if you want to. Uh, it's not a requirement, not a requirement, but you, you, just to say it's going to be very, it will be very, very, very casual. Um, so I need to learn some new ways to get from Mount Oliver to Brookline because when I came up Whitehead Boulevard, they had it all blocked. So, so the only other way, thank you, I will, I'll try Pioneer next time, or West Liberty. The only other way I knew though this morning was Edgebrook. I came up Edgebrook, Edgebrook. It was, it, I just pretended I, it was like dashing through the snow and, you know, like on my way to grandma's house, you know, through the woods. <laughs> no, I was thinking if I wreck, where's Patty? And I can, I can, <laughs> I can, I can, I can find her. Um, so anyway, it's wonderful to have you all here this morning. Those of you who are able to be here and are there any other announcements for the congregation um, for the congregation today? Yes, Paul. We need to get me closer. Um, my announcement is that uh, on your way in, coming through the breezeway, you should have seen that the envelopes for 2023 have been placed out. And I just want to make sure that you're aware that, that they should be there. If you do not find envelopes for you, let me know and I will make sure that you get them. If on the other hand, you see envelopes for you, but you don't want them, once again, let me know. Or if I've spelled your name wrong, or if I have any other kind of errors that, that are glaring you in the face, uh, just let me know. Thanks. Oh, and uh, probably next week I'll start putting my contact information in case you don't have it, so that uh, you will be able to contact me in any event. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Um, and then I also just wanted to announce that I, I am am going to be um, take the week uh, off as vacation between Christmas and New Year's. However, I'll be around. I, I just, so feel free to call me. I'm, 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 still, I'm still available. I, I just won't be coming in. Uh, most likely I will not be coming into the church office uh, or, and we will not be having, having Bible study or, or anything or anything like that. So, so the week between um, Christmas Day and New Year's, New Year's Day, um, just, just call my home, just call my home number if you want to, if you need to get in touch with me for an emergency or, or something like that, okay? Yes, um, Ray. Uh, just an update on Janet and uh, Ray Hatfield. I've been in contact with them. And as the week progressed, it got a little better. But uh, Janet, who has, was taken to St. Clair because she had uh, chest uh, pleurisy, that's the word. And she wasn't, so they took her to St. Clair she was there, but in the meantime, I think, as I mentioned last week, Ray became sick, and he was concerned about her 
coming home and him not being able to take care of her. So he was trying to set up a program so that she could come back and go into the still, skill care uh, so she'd be safe. And uh, unfortunately, because of the Baptist home clothing, they moved a lot of those people down into where they were, so there was nothing available. So he was trying to get a peace of mind where she would go. Well, I called him a couple of days later, and he told me, well, she, she left the hospital, and she went back to the Concordia place where they have their apartment, but they informed them that uh, they weren't going to put her in a skill care. They were going to put her in where the therapy uh, place was, which people can move around. Jean was in there going through her therapy. And he says, that will not work. She needs to have somebody watch her. They said, well, she'll be perfectly fine. I called her the next day, called him the next day. They put her in there, and she fell during the night, and she cracked her head open. Oh. So and then they had to move her back to St. Clair, and that's the last place I know she's at. So please keep Ray and Jen in your prayers because Ray is he's improving a little bit with his pleurisy. He had trouble with medicine and all that stuff, so he's really apprehensive about the way things are going in the family and where he's living. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ray, for that update. And um, yeah, just, you know, just a reminder that, that for, for, for many of us, this is, this is a particular joyous, joyous time because we, um, we look forward to being able to see family and, and so forth. But, but there are also a lot of folks for whom, for whom the holidays are are, are a very sad time because uh, perhaps they've perhaps they've they've lost a loved one. Uh, this perhaps they've lost a loved one this year who, for the first time, won't be won't be with them for um, for, for Christmas. So 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 please remember and 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 if you have an opportunity, you know, give a call. Give a call to those for whom this is a difficult time, a difficult time of year, as well. Any other announcements from the congregation today? No? Any, any uh, God sightings that people would like to share? Okay. Every day I have God sightings. Every time we leave the house, Jack and I, I always tell them we're on a mission where we're going. Uh, Tuesday night was board meeting. The reason I don't like to be on the board is because I don't like to go to meetings. So I'm like, okay, I don't want to leave the house. It's cold. It's dark. I don't like leaving the house. Although Jack put me in the car and I came to church. Okay, I got here and I'm like, once I get something, I'm, I'm fine. I got here and my God sighting was Chris Knuff came in with her chair and came and served. And I thought, what is wrong with me? There's no reason to be like that because it just seems like um, we go out during the day and we, I don't feel like we need to go out at night. And I, once I saw Chris, I was like, okay, God, this is easy. This is going to be easy for me to serve. And I thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I do want to, to welcome those. I, there are probably more online this week than usual because of, uh, Folks who didn't want to want to drive in this morning, but are watching online, and so I give my I give my uh, Advent blessings to all of you who are watching who are watching online this morning, and and invite you to prepare um, you know a little wine and bread if if you are able uh, at your uh, at a table, and so that when we share in Holy Communion today, that you will be able to share with us. Yes, Ray. Yesterday, again, Saturday, she got a truckload and a van full of food. And we were, there must have been about 10 or 15 of us up here unloading the food and separating it between the food that goes to Meals on Wheels and the food. And we put up three tables outside. And the people know on Saturday at a certain time, 
it's good to stop at St. Mark's and they do. And some of them now come with their own bags and so forth, but there's many new ones that are coming too. The word must be out, but we're getting short on plastic bags. Uh, uh, so those of, you, those of you who put them in the recycling or throw them in the garbage, save them in a bag and bring them to the church or we're gonna have to start buying bags. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Ray. That gives me something to do with all my plastic bags on the kitchen floor right now until I get home to clean this afternoon. So any other any other announcements or God sightings today? Yes, yes, Jean. mean to have secrets with pastor but i needed to affirm i had a right name yesterday was lady lions we had a wonderful time we talked about joy and peace that was great the fellowship at there is where you get to sit and talk to somebody and laugh after we have the devotion and nadia came somebody pulled in front of her driveway and she couldn't drive up so she walked and it was so good to see her. And what a blessing she was. We were doing a craft of making bells for a door and we had a braid. Well, some said, I can't do this. And I said, it's gonna be hard, but you'll do it. Nadia went zip, 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 zip. The most beautiful braiding I've ever seen. And I said, Nadia, you're so good. And she smiled and said, oh, I've done a lot of practice. <laughs> And so some said, I can't, spin, I don't, I can't get my hand. I don't remember how to do it. She made three extra ones for the people. And while they held the one end, she braided on the other. <laughs> it was wonderful. And you know what made me feel so good? That is what it's like for brothers and sisters. When they see somebody having a problem, jump right in there and say, I can help you. It was great. It was a great God sighting to see everybody laughing and trying to do this project I could hardly do myself. But anyway, that's what it's all about. Brothers and sisters loving each other and jumping in there to help out. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. If I had known you were doing braiding, I would have come because I can braid. You know that. When you, when you when you're blessed with when you're blessed with an African American daughter, you 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 learn to braid no matter no matter what. And um, but for those of you who don't know, Nadia, of course, is, is uh, and her and her uh, daughter Rama are refugees from Syria. Um, you know who are often here, and and please keep them in your prayers because. Nadia's husband is not doing very well, and he doesn't speak any English at all, which means she she can't bring someone in to, to very much to help him because he can't understand, you know, what they're what they're 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 speaking. Yes. Yes. He's permanently on oxygen. Okay. Okay. Yes. So so. Um, again, just let, let us let us let us keep keep them in prayer as well. Any other any other announcements? As I see some more people walking in, all bundled up. You were you were right, um, Sherry. Mount Oliver was perfect. Yeah, yeah, and I could immediately tell as I got as as I got into the the city park because then it was all full of snow, and I and I could so. Um, Anyway, any any other any other announcements this morning? If not, then let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Let us be at prayer.
Please stand as you are able. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. With a heart full of mercy and compassion, God saves us and forgives our sin. Christ, the dawn from on high, shines upon us and by the light of the Holy Spirit guides our feet into the way of peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My 
my soul proclaims your greatness, Lord, I sing my Savior's praise. You looked upon my holiness, and I am full of grace. Now every land and every age a blessing Let us pray. O oh God of promise, you made a commitment to Joseph that you would make Jesus a savior to all. Renew your commitment with us so that all may know the saving grace of your son, Jesus. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, amen. Light for candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He is coming. Tell the glad tidings. Let your lights be shining. congregation may be seated for the first reading. From the 23rd Psalm, verses 1 through 4. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph. But before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Ali, you want to come forward? Have a seat. And today, you get to be Queen Alley. Queen Alley. You get to be, um, well, the next, the next verses that we would have heard if we would have kept reading a little bit longer in the gospel lesson were about King Herod. Now, King Herod was one nasty dude. King Herod was as wicked as they come. And so King Herod used all of his might and all of his power to try to crush the Jewish people. He did everything that he could think of to try to make them and their life miserable. The reason King Herod did this is because, you see, above King Herod, there was someone else in first century Palestine who was even more powerful than King Herod was. And that was the emperor. And so the emperor was in charge of the entire Roman Empire, a, a, a very, very large area that, that encompasses uh, literally um, dozens of countries today. And so the emperor was in charge of, of the whole empire. King Herod was just in charge of the area of the land of Israel and Jerusalem and Bethlehem where Jesus, where Jesus would be born. But King Herod thought that what he had to do in order to make the emperor like him, was he wanted to do things that made, um, th that made him look like a good guy to the emperor. The problem with it was the things that make, sometimes that make you look like a good guy or a good gal to, to one person might actually make you be even more hated by another group, right? And so the people, including Mary and Joseph, and all the people of, of Judea, they did not like King Herod one bit. So let me tell you something, a little bit about, about King Herod. King Herod was, was, he, was he was very, um, let's see, what's, what's the word? He was, he was, he, he was insecure. Do you know what the word insecure means? He, yeah, he didn't feel secure in his position of power. 
he was afraid that even people within his own family might try and, and hurt him so that they could become king. So King Herod was so nasty that he killed three of his sons, his wife, and, and a brother-in-law because he thought that they were going to um, try and take the throne and the crown from him. That doesn't sound like a very good guy, does it? Yeah, right, right. And so the other thing that King Herod did was he put huge taxes on the Jewish people. And, and he, he would take the extra money and some of it he would send to Caesar, to the emperor. And then, and then he, he built lots of beautiful things. He, built, he built himself a wonderful palace. He, he, he actually built uh, the, the temple that the people worshiped in and, and, and he rebuilt parts of the temple and he made, made it even, even more beautiful uh, than it had been before it was destroyed 500 years, years earlier. He, um, he, he, built, he built roads, he built theaters, he built stadiums. He even built a whole city just for um, the Caesar, just for the emperor. I'm going to ask the adults if anybody knows what that city is that he built. Do you think they'll know? You think you know? Okay, you tell me. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> not quite. Good answer, but not not quite. Um, it, do any adults know what, what was the what was the the entire city uh, that that um, Herod Herod built for? for Caesar, for Emperor Caesar. Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, right? It was, it, it was, a, it, it was a, um, a city up, up, uh, up along um, the, the, the sea, and, uh, and there are wonderful uh, aqueducts there and things that you can, that you can still, that you can still go, go and see. And so, King Herod built even this city just for the emperor. And the other thing that he did was Rome was known for having one, some really very, very nice roads, uh, better than Pittsburgh, I must say, not nearly as, as, as hilly. And, um, but bandits would, would wait along the road and if they saw one, somebody walking from one place to another, they might, the bandits would rob them and attack. And so uh, Herod wanted to get rid of all that. And so, so he said, you know, what I'm going to do is if anybody is even accused of robbing someone, I'm going to kill them without even, without even giving them a trial. And there was another thing that, that Herod did. He used, he used this extra money that he uh, took away from, from the Jews and he used that to, to make a, 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 a strong military around, around uh, Jerusalem. And, and he had a secret police force that he, that, and the secret police force would watch people, would watch the Jewish people and if they did anything, wrong um you know they they would they would attack them and they would they would uh you know write down that write down their names and so herod was just not a very good guy but interestingly enough the roman senate which was part of the government they named they named herod king of the Jews. They gave him that special name. The problem was when Jesus was born, one of the names that was used for Jesus was King of the Jews, right? 
And so when Herod learned that there was this other king who had just been born, even though he was just a baby, who had just been born, uh, and, they, and that some people were saying that he, this baby Jesus, was going to grow up to be the king of the Jews, Herod uh, was furious. And so what Herod wanted to do is to make sure that Jesus was killed. And so Joseph and Mary, after Jesus was born, they go into Egypt. They, they, want, they need to get away from King Herod. And they go to Egypt until they hear that Herod dies. And when they heard that Herod had died, then they came, then they came back um, and went to live in Nazareth. So whenever you hear the name King Herod, right, in, in, in any story or in any Bible, Bible story, you know that he was not a nice king, right? He was, he was, he was definitely, he was definitely a bad dude. And the thing that happens in the lesson today is that an angel of the Lord comes to Joseph, Jesus' father. An angel of the Lord comes to Joseph and tells Joseph that it's okay if he marries Mary because they were supposed to get married and all of a sudden he heard that Mary was already pregnant. And so, um, and so an angel of the Lord, and the word angel in, in me actually means messenger, messenger of God. That's what an angel is, and a messenger from God. And so the angel uh, told Joseph two things. In, in today's story, he says it's okay because the baby that Mary is carrying is from the Holy Spirit and you can marry her. And then later on, it's an angel of the Lord again that comes to Joseph in the dream and says, you know, you need to flee. You need to flee um, Bethlehem and go to Egypt because Herod is about to kill all the Hebrew baby boys who are two years old and younger. And so in order to keep Jesus safe, Joseph and Mary become refugees and they go to live in another country, which the country that they lived in was, was Egypt for a while. And then after they heard that, that Herod was gone, then they, came, then they came back. And that was the way that they kept the baby Jesus uh, safe from, from King Herod, okay? So the things I want you to remember today is, is what is an angel? A messenger from God, very good. Uh, anytime we hear about an angel in, in the Bible, it means someone who is a messenger from, from God. And Joseph relies on this messenger from God to keep himself and Mary and the baby Jesus safe. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for all who, who show up, who appear in our lives as, as messengers of you. All those people in our lives who, who maybe come at an unexpected time and in an unexpected place to lead us and guide us and show us how we can be your faithful disciples in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can return to your seats now, but I have to take back this crown because we're still going to need this one more time in the season of Christmas. People of God, grace, mercy, and peace to you from our living God and from our coming Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. So today's gospel lesson is the nativity story from St. Matthew. And there are, of the four gospels, there are two that have nativity stories. One is Matthew and one is Luke. And unlike the nativity story that we will hear on Christmas Eve, which is the, the story from Luke, this is a very different story. Now, it's a little simplistic, perhaps, to say that, that the nativity story in Matthew is, is told from, from Joseph's point of view, and the nativity story from Luke is told from Mary's point of view. But in reality, there's also a lot of truth to that, um, to that as well. So in this story from Matthew, we, we, are, we are hearing from Joseph's point of view. And Mary doesn't play, well, giving birth, I guess you have to say she plays a pretty big role no matter what, right? But, but Mary doesn't talk. Uh, she doesn't speak in this particular, in this particular story. Um, it, it all, the whole story revolves primarily around around Joseph. And we're told in the first verse of today's gospel lesson that Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, we're told she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. You see, in, in first century Palestine, it was a little bit different from today. There were two parts to, to a marriage. There was the, the betrothal, what was called the betrothal, and that's where you pledge to one another that you are, are going to get married. And then there's the actual wedding ceremony. So in a way, you might say, well, you know, it's comparable to an engagement, you know, that, that, that what had happened at the time is that Mary and Joseph were engaged but they hadn't been married yet, except that to be betrothed to someone meant more than just engagement because they were both considered part of the marriage arrangement. Um, in other words, if you were betrothed, what that meant was, okay, you, or in many cases, your family determined that, you know, these two, folks were going to get married. And, but the, the woman would con continue to live with her parents until the time of the actual wedding ceremony, and that's when the woman would go and live with the husband. But again, it, it would, legally it was more than just being engaged because even though Mary and Joseph were betrothed, it, it, he didn't have the ability to just say, okay, we're going to break the engagement. You know, we're not going to get married. Because according to Jewish law, if a woman became pregnant before uh, she moved in with her husband, she was to be stoned. She was to be, uh, there was supposed to be a trial, and she was supposed to be stoned to death. And Joseph, you know, we're told from the very beginning, he didn't, he didn't want that for Mary. He, we're told that, that he said, you know, that, that he, he, would, he would just, you know, allow her um, allow her to... to essentially es escape, to leave town with her parents so that she wouldn't be stoned, um, which is what the law required. So essentially what Joseph did was, was, he, was he was just giving Mary enough time to move away. That's what he thought. That's when the angel of the Lord comes to Joseph as a messenger 
and brings Joseph the message in a dream that he could indeed take Mary as his wife because the child in her, the child that she would bear, was from the Holy Spirit, was from God himself. And there are two names, there are two names that come up in today's, uh, in today's gospel lesson. The first is, you shall call him Jesus. Jesus literally means God saves. You shall call him Jesus, and that name literally means God saves. The other, the other uh, name that we are told about in this, in this gospel lesson is Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. Now, I, I want to spend a little more time today talking about the comparison between some of the characters in, in this birth, in this nativity story of Jesus, and, and the, the area uh, that, that was um, the area in which, in which they lived. Because, as I said, if you look at the story of Luke, which we'll hear Christmas Eve, that focuses primarily on Mary. Today's story focuses more on Matthew. If you look at the story of Luke, we get the characters of the shepherds. And the, you know, the angels appear to the shepherds and tell them to go to, go to Bethlehem, uh, where, where they will find, uh, find this baby uh, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. There are no shepherds in Matthew's story. In Matthew's story, we hear about the wise men. And that's the story that we'll hear on the last day on the 12th day of Christmas on, on uh, January 5th is the story of, of the wise men coming to, to pay homage and to bring Jesus, the, the baby Jesus, gifts. There are some other, other um, very distinct uh, marks of clarification just like the shepherds and the wise men were very different, the story of Matthew is written to primarily Jewish Christians, whereas the, the story of Luke is, was written primarily to Gentiles, to non-Jews. And so each of those, each of, each of Matthew and Luke kind of tell the story from a way that their own congregations uh, that would make sense to their own congregations. There is a very clear delineation between insiders and outsiders. You know, you, the, the shepherds, for example, were most likely, they were also Jewish, but they were outsiders. Shepherds were known to be uh, people who were, who were, were dirty and, and smelly, and they, um, they, they were often accused of stealing things uh, from, from, the, from the people who lived, who lived in the village. So even though the shepherds were Jewish, they were still considered outsiders. Another, another good uh, example that we see is in the story of Luke, we hear about Caesar Augustus, the, Ro the Roman Empire. Whereas in this story from Matthew that we just heard of today, it's more about King Herod um, and, and the way that King Herod interacted with, uh, with the Christ child. But the thing that I really want to lift up today is, is this name, this name Emmanuel, that we are told that we will, you know, we will come and, and uh, or the, this child will be born, and his name will be Emmanuel, which means God with us. And essentially what that means for the people, again, imagine yourself as, as Mary and Joseph, or imagine yourself as one of, as one of the villagers, right? 
you're living in a time in which it is it's very a very harsh time right you're you're being you're being overburdened with taxes uh from king herod uh he he he's just a mean and nasty man um and and was always looking for reasons to actually to actually kill the the jews and when the roman senate pronounces king herod as king of the jews and herod hears that there's this baby who's been born who now is also may be referred to as king of the jews herod becomes um as as uh as ali said they're very insecure they're very uncertain about his own power and his own place in society. And as I look around the world today, as, as we have many times in the last, in, in the last few Sundays and, and, and talked about, about how, how difficult the world seems, particularly in places, in places like the Ukraine, or in places uh, like like Chad, where where there is now again a terrible starvation ha happening among among children, in places as nearby as Haiti, where um, essentially the government in Haiti has totally collapsed, and and it's being overrun by uh, by. by by young gang gang members, which was also the case, of course, when I was when I was in in El Salvador, uh, and and the the reason that we have so many immigrants who try and refugees who come to the to our southern border trying to get away from from the uh, from the desperation of their own countries and in places like El Salvador and Guatemala and and Nicaragua. In Panama, it's a rough life. It's a tough life for people who are living under such dire circumstances. And so, what is the thing that might still provide hope? In the midst of Ukraine, in the midst of, of Chad and Haiti and other places across the world, what, how can there be hope? And what is it about this Savior, Jesus, who might bring us hope? And it's that name. It's the name Emmanuel, God with us. That even in the midst of the most dire of circumstances, we as people of faith believe that God is with us. We think about, you know, people ask on 9-11, on you know, where was God? Where was God as, as over 2,000 people were killed in the Twin Towers? And the answer is, God was with us. It was not that somehow God had deserted us, but God was with us. The, fam the, the uh, famous uh, Jewish philosopher, uh, Simon Weil, talked about how it was in the midst of the Nazi concentration camps and how people survived day after day after day in these Nazi concentration camps. And Simon Weil said the reason was the only thing that kept us going was the promise that God is with us. And so there's something very interesting, something very amazing, something very hopeful that even in the midst of this really what what becomes a terrible scene in the gospel of matthew today is that jesus 
is called Emmanuel, God with us. Go to, let's jump all the way to the end now of the Gospel of Matthew. If you jump all the way to the end of the Gospel of Matthew, the very last verse is the Great Commission. Go therefore into all the world, baptizing and teaching people about the laws of God, and remember what? I am with you until the end of the age. That is the promise that you and I look forward to on this coming Christmas. The promise that God is with us no matter what. That God is with us in the midst of war and family separation. That God is with us in the midst of, of hunger or homelessness. That God is with us. That is the promise that you and I share together. It is a promise like no other. God never tells us, God never tells us that life will be easy. What God tells us over and over again is that in the midst of this life, in the midst of, of sickness, in the midst of death, in the midst of, of all kinds of crimes against humanity, still I am with you to the end of the age. Amen.
us profess our faith together using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fear so that we serve and love confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats in peril due to rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our vision, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote peace and human rights, especially Amnesty International, Lutheran World Relief, and Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our helper, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experiencing hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. Especially today, we pray for your presence for Dennis, Mark, Nicole, Tracy, Bill, Claire, Dylan, Mark, Pat, Ginny, Ray, and Janet for those who are traveling, for all those who have experienced fires in our own area and for all those without homes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship, and we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel, heal the sick and speed their recovery. Especially today, we pray for Jack, Bill, Carol, Alice, Sue, Chris, Colleen, Sally, Nadine, Chris, Sue, Alice, Carol, Shirley, Judy, Michael, Janet, Mike, Kenny, and Barb. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope, you bring life out of death and you promise to be our God and to be with us forever. 
We give you thanks also for the gift of those who are near and dear to us, our friends and family whom we keep in our hearts and in our prayers, especially for Nana and Louise, Brandon, for Jeff, and for the gift of your son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Shine upon the faithful who now rest in the fulfillment of your promise and bring us also into your blessed reign of peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. of the Lord be with you always. Let us pray together the offertory prayer. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for all, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord in the wonder and the wonder and the mystery of the word made flesh you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory that beholding the god made visible we may be drawn to love the god we cannot see and so with the church on earth and the whole host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great. Lord of heaven. 
the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. blood of Jesus shed for you.
And now, sisters and brothers, let us partake of the gifts that we have received, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please stand as you are able. And before I give the charge to the people, allow me to say that we now have um, communion cards in the aisles, uh, uh, in the pews again. So you only need to fill them out once. So if you're not sure if you filled them out yet for this, for this year, uh, go ahead please and, and fill, fill them out, uh, fill one out. And then also the same in January. We will, you know, you only need to fill out one for the year, and then we have record that, that you have that you have, have communed with us here at, at St. Mark's. Brothers and sisters, go out into the world in peace. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. together the post-communion prayer let us pray almighty God you provide the true bread from heaven your son Jesus Christ our Lord grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever amen People of God, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord upon, look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
just one final announcement that the, uh, the live nativity at 6 o'clock on Friday night is not going to happen because it's supposed to be way cold. Um, but we will worship together at 7 o'clock for Christmas Eve. Go in peace. Love your neighbor.